Hello again everyone, today I'll be doing my port coaching session for my channel. Today it will be for the summoner XFX. He has re recently transitioned from a mid laner to a jungler, so he has asked for assistance on improving his play as a jungler. So, as, as a jungler, you have many roles. You have champion knowledge, ability to recognize win conditions prior to the start of a game, objective control, efficient pathing, efficient farming, ganking, protecting, counter ganking, map awareness, and effective team fighting. I've broken the jungle into several roles. As the jungle is more about your mind, you have to think about what is the best decision to make at a specific point in time, and it has many complex components. So what I mean by champion knowledge is you need to be able to know when you're doing a specific gank, the ability of success of the gank. If the gank is more in your favor or if the gank is more in the enemy's favor. You can tell this by looking at many variables. This could be the HP of your ally that you're trying to help gank. This could be the HP of the enemy. This could be the possibility of the enemy having more CC and being able to um, outplay you if their jungler comes to help them. I basically their jungler counter ganking you. So there's many factors you need to take into account. You just can't just gank a lane. You need to think about the map as a whole. Like you need to know the champions themselves. If your enemy has more CC they, and they're more tanky, they're more likely to win the 2v2. If it's a counter gank, then you are able to win it. There's many factors that come into place. You need to know each champion's abilities. And you need to know how to gank. You need to know if to avoid certain um, spells, such as Syndra stun. You need to know if to avoid Vegas. Um, cage, there's several factors that come into play with a gank. Okay, the ability to recognize win conditions prior to the start of a game. At the start of a game, which is at the loading screen, and even at the champ select screen, you need to look at each team. You look at your team to see what is your win conditions. If it's by team fighting, if it's by split pushing, if it's by picking off enemies, you need to look at the enemy team and think of the same thing. If they can win by team fighting, having stronger team fighting than your team, if they're able to split better, such as if they have like maybe, let's say, a Fiora, if they have a um, Udyr, if they have a Trindomare, or looking split push, or even Jax, if they have, let's say, champions who are able to engage better, like divers, uh, such as maybe Yavan, and if your team lacks these divers, so if your team lacks these divers, your team might need to pick off a certain enemy before the team fight starts, so you'll be able to be a 4v5. There's many barrels that come into play. So you need to think of how do you win this game. You need to look at objective control. Objective control means if you can take a dragon at a specific point in the game because you know that the enemy jungler is a large distance from the dragon, so they can't smite steal it. Same thing with repairal. If, let's say, you're able to um, get a kill bot lane, you don't just want to take the kill, you want to take the tower too, or try to get some damage on the tower. Or even, let's say, you know the enemy's on another side of the map, you're able to take more control on his side, side of the jungle that he's not on. You may, might be able to um, take his camps. If you're not able to take his camps, you can even place wards. So you'll have more control of the map. This is what I mean by objective control. So that's one of the rules of a jungler. You need to have efficient pathing. You can't be taking camps from one direction and then change up your direction of pathing to take different camps. You should take your camps in a chronological order in a method. So if you clear your blue buff, then your grump, you will then want to clear your wolves. You don't want to go and clear, let's say your blue buff, then your wolves and go back to your grump. That's going backwards. You want to go in a straight path and you don't want to outdo the path. So you want to clear your camps in an order so your camps will be up at the correct times and you will throw off your time timers on your camps. You need to have efficient farming, which is the same thing. You don't want to just gank continuously. You want to gank and um, farm at the same time to balance it. So you will have the maximum experience gains. However, even though you want to balance the, the ganking and the farming, you want to have it. So the best way is to look at your experience gains. If you are likely to level up from a camp, then it's better you take that camp so you can gain the level advantage. But if you are going to take several camps to get a level, it's better to gank a lane. This is, this is a very important thing in ganking and farming. You need to look at the um, specific experience level and if you will gain a level advantage. If not, if you don't get a, gain a level advantage, you're better off ganking because you're not getting out anything out of it. It's all about efficiency. Okay, then ganking as a whole, there's several factors which I mentioned before related to champion knowledge. 
However, there's not only ganking. Many junglers just look at it in a perspective of ganking. You have ganking, protecting, and counter ganking. But what I mean by protecting is instead of ganking a specific lane to a large extent, a specific point in the game, instead you could ward up for them. But if you're not just warding up for them, you're going to um hit this couple crab that's also placing a ward, or you could place wards in the enemy jungle, so you'll be able to see the enemy jungler when they come to gank your lane. Or not only that, you could even um, ping back your laners. That's another form of protecting. So if you are aware that the enemy jungler might be in that specific place at that time, even if you don't have wards, you could even tell at some in some conditions where the enemy jungler is. So you could protect your lanes. So you want to spam ping in those situations, which is what I have here. Which is This is also linked to map awareness. If you could know where the enemy jungler is by predicting where they are, you can use your pings and protect your lanes. That um, need protection rather than being able to gank those lanes. An example is seen in, in this game you play where you have um, Ezreal and Janna. It's difficult to gank a Ezreal and Janna lane versus a Jin and Sion lane. It's better to protect that lane, which I, you actually do do in the game, which is a good thing. You just protect the lane. You don't gank it to a large extent because it's difficult to gank that lane. However, later on in the game, you may be able to gank it. But at the start of the game, you want to protect that lane. In each game, you need to analyze which lane you want to gank, which lane you want to protect, and which lane you want to counter gank. You might want to do both for some lanes. I want to gank and protect it. It depends on the flow of the game. Each game is different. With counter ganking, to be able to counter gank, you need to have map awareness. But what I mean by that is if you have the map awareness to know where the enemy jungler is, or if you saw the enemy jungler in a specific place before, you don't want to gank that lane unless you know you have an advantage in a 2v2 scenario with their enemy jungler. If you're able to have the advantage in 2v2, then you can go ahead with the gank. But if you don't have that 2v2 advantage, then you want to avoid ganking that lane because you know where the enemy jungler is. If you are able to see them on a ward or just predict their movements by tracking them as you are able to play in the game. Another thing is effective team fighting. You need to be able to know which carry you need to delete at the start of the team fight if you're playing an assassin like Lee Sin. You need to know, do you need to pick off the, the um, let's say in this specific game, the Jin? Do you need to pick off the Syndra or do you need to pick off the Yi or even the Wukong? You need to decide your team fighting method in the game based on the role you are playing so it's be different for every single jungler like at a tank jungler you might just want to engage but as a jungler engage and zone off the front la front laners from your backline or maybe even yeah in terms of peeling and there's many different things each jungler has um a high advantage with you need to think about how can you effectively win the team fight you can't just brainlessly play the team fight out. That's not gonna win the team fight. You need to think strategically about how can you win this team fight and gain your lead over the enemy in this team fight and win the team fight overall. So I included methods to improve each role of a jungler. How you can improve each role, this is not only stuck to the jungle role, but in terms of all roles in league, you should focus on one role of the Pacific role on a whole, like one role of the jungler, which I have mentioned above here. Focus on one of the roles and do this for a minimum of three games. I would say a maximum of five games per role. And uh, once you feel that you've perfected it or reached a certain point where you can um, have it naturally in your mind, you don't have to think about a specific role that you, um, the role plays, like the jungler. You just naturally do it because you've done it so many times before. That's where you best improve each skill. So you best improve each part of the role as a whole, like jungler, by focusing on that component. You don't want to focus on many components together. Your brain can't handle so many components of the role as a whole. You just focus on one thing. So one game you focus on only champion knowledge, based on how you're ganking lane, on the CC of the enemies, the tankiness, the HP levels, or ability to recognize win conditions. So you look at the pre-game, I look at during the game, you're recognizing who is fed on your team, who is fed on the enemy, and therefore how best you can win the game. Looking at objective control, focusing on just clearing dragons and repairal and clearing towers. Don't focus on any other thing to a great detail. Just do it naturally. And this applies to all the principles. You just want to focus on a, one thing for each set of games. So, and never autopilot. That's a very important thing as for any role, but especially for jungle, because jungle is all about your mind. You have to think about what is the best move to do at a specific time. It's all about decision making. You also want to be adaptive. If you originally had a strategy in mind, you need, might need to change your strategy based on how the game is flowing. If you thought you might have to protect a lane at the start of the game, later on in the game you might need to protect a different lane, or need to you might need to gang that lane instead of protecting it. You need to adapt to the flow of the game based on how the game is going. Okay, 
shortly I'm going to go into the details of the Pacific replay. However, I'm just going to discuss some things relating to how you would analyze the team comps for this game. So I started the game at the pre-game lobby screen where you're selecting champs and even at the loading screen you want to think about how does each team win their game. So for the first team, which is team A, which includes the enemy team, that's Sion, Jen, Syndra, Yi, and Wukong, how they would win their team fights ideally, although this is so the queue, so they're most likely not gonna follow this to the T. However, except um this is exactly what they should do to win the team fights. Sion would ult in to start the fight from a side lane. It should be out of vision ideally, so you will not know where he's coming from. Then Syndra will knock back with a stun, either from just Syndra alone or with Jin through his arm um, roots as well. Then Wukong could ult in to CC and knock off everybody. Then Yi ults in and cleans up. And you might even exhaust your blood or your fed parry on your team. So basically, you this is all tying into knowing your champion knowledge and even knowing game knowledge as a whole, knowing how effective is their team comp in terms of team fighting, how effective is your team comp. With respect to your team comp, how you'll win your team fights is Lee has to kick any enemies into the enemy team. So you're not just kicking one enemy at a time, you're kicking one enemy into several enemies. That would be ideal. And then because you've done that, Yasuo will be able to ult, while Vladimir is able to go in with his pool and do tons of burst damage. And Ezra will do damage from behind, and the best thing is to exhaust the fed carry, ideally the fed carry, but it can also be the the champion that does damage naturally to a high damage burst, which will be E. So what I would say is you should um, type in chat to the Janna saying you should exhaust E. I don't recommend typing in chat very often because it takes away your mind from the actual game itself. However, seeing a simple thing as can you exhaust E Janna because to minimize his burst damage will be very beneficial. Both your teams have great team fighting potential. However, the enemy team has better team fighting potential based on everything I mentioned than your team does. The only way for your team fighting to be efficient is if you are able to land your kick into the enemies. They have several ways to engage their team fighting, which is Wukong, Sion, even Syndra, or even Jin. So you need to think of it in that perspective. So how you will win your team fights, because they have a better team fight potential, what you should do is you need to pick up one of the enemies, or your team as a whole needs to pick up one enemy before when the team fight now starts, so once you pick up one, you'll be able to deal with the rest of the enemies. Ideally, the most damage dealing or high damage dealing enemy, which could be Yi, it could be Syndra, or it could be Jin. However, I would recommend the Yi because Yi naturally does a lot of damage into the late game with his um item completions. So I'll now look into the win conditions for each team, even though I discussed it to a small extent before. You need to pick off for your team to win the team fight, you need to attempt to pick off the Yi in team fights first, or pick off the Yi or Jin prior to team fight, maybe in the jungle, or you can even do it during the start of the team fight. Or you must exhaust the Yi, which is what I mentioned before. If Yi or Jin is eliminated from the team fight, your team will have a much larger advantage by damage, and you'll be able to win the team fight as a whole. Now I'll talk about the other team, which is the enemy team. Their win condition will simply be to fight a 5v5, because their team fight is way better than your team fight. And so you'll have a 90% chance at least to win a team fight. And I'll talk about your build. Uh, your build is good for the team comp because you are choosing a tank build, which has only tank specific jungler items, etc. And you're not building damage barely to any extent. Um, that's a good build for this certain game because your team doesn't have a tank. However, if your team was low on damage or they already had a tank, I'd recommend you go full damage with a GA for protection. However, one other thing, if you happen to get ahead in the game itself, where you have most of the kills in the game, in the early game, I would recommend you build damage to better snowball your lead with only a minor amount of tank. Maybe GA and maybe, let's say, the... Uh, any, any certain tank item which is able to do damage. Any of the tank is able to help you be more tanky so you can engage fights better and not um, disintegrate before the fight is able to get anywhere. You build several tank items, so you could just choose any of those. Okay, I'll now look at your runes. I look at your runes. Most of your runes are ideal. However, I would say instead of taking water walking in sorcery i think taking scorch will be better because you'll be able to apply the burn damage every few 
every um other 20 seconds, I think it is. I also don't like the sorcery page too much for Leeson. I prefer to take precision. Many um assassin junglers rather take precision. I even play Shaco, which Shaco is my main, and I take precision because I think it's more, most beneficial. And what I would recommend is Triumph and Group the Grace. These are probably better than taking sorcery. Um, I think it's way better for snowballing, which is the goal for Lee Sin. Lee Sin is a snowball early game jungler. He doesn't want to play into the late game without a lead. If he doesn't have a lead in the early game, he's likely to fall off significantly. And if he doesn't use his lead at the start, then you'll fall off even more. Which I think is a major issue you experience in this specific game. Okay, so I'm now going to... Just talk, mention one last set of stuff related to the ganking or potential for um, protecting your lanes before I actually go into the replay. Okay, so for bot lane, it's gankable, but only the enemy is shoved up as Janna has minimal engage. It's best to protect this lane instead of ganking lane a lot in the early game. It's better you protect it. However, later on in the game, which I mentioned before about being adaptive, you might need to change your playstyle. And you might need to end up ganking the lane more than just protecting it. Because if you have a lead, you could transition this lead into another lane. Like the bot lane. If they're not severely behind, if they're severely behind, it makes no sense ganking lane. But if they're not severely behind, you can push your lead into the lane and help them win the lane. I would say 3v3 fights, which would be with the enemy jungler Yi, will be lost as Janna CC is way less than Scion. Scion can have a much larger impact in a 3v3 fight than your laners will be able to. So I would say avoid any 3v3 fights, which would be counter ganks. For mid lane, it's gankable once you avoid Syndra's stun. Play it, you should play it slow and get the kill. For the combo of Yi and Syndra, like if um you were to get counter ganked, pre 6 their 2v2 of Syndra and Yi is much stronger than Lee and Vlad. Main reason for this is because <clears throat> you don't have your power spike of your ult, and Vlad doesn't have his power spike of his ult. Vlad's major damage comes from his ult. And he does a significant amount of damage with his ult also. He's able to kick, he's also able to kick Syndra into um, the Blad, and Blad is able to do a large amount of damage way easier. So he and Syndra will be able to win that fight much easier at the start before level 6. So I would say you should avoid any form of 2v2s in mid lane prior to level 6. You need to think about this before every game, you need to think about every lane, think about it in terms of 1v1, a 2v2 perspective, 2v1 perspective and a 2v2 perspective if there was a counter gang. You need to see, would you win this, would you win this specific team fight? Or will the enemy win the team fight? If you want any more further information about the different combinations based on if you can win that um two v two or not, um you could probably talk to me about it and I could give more advice. However, you need to analyze the start of every game. Lastly, about with the Yi or Syndra after level six, your two v two is stronger because Lee and Vlad's are also stronger than Syndra and Yi's ults, which I mentioned before. If you're going to 2v2, then you have to do it at four levels. Do it at 6 in mid lane. Don't do it before level 6. And lastly, I'll mention um, for top lanes ganks, it's gankable if you wait out Wukong's in this, or if you play around his in this. You should carry, maybe carry a control ward so you can know where he is if it's necessary. If you get a kick and land, if you get a kick and it's landed, Yas may be able to ult him. So your 2v2 with Yi though will be a close fight, I would say. So, um,. In order to win that 2v2, you would probably have to avoid Wukong's ult. If you avoid Wukong's ult, then you will most likely be able to win the 2v2 in top lane. So it's all about analyzing the specific matchups and knowing if you can win that team fight or if the enemy can win that fight. So you need to analyze this for every single game at the start. Look at each lane. Do you need to gank it? Do you need to protect it? The reason why you will need to protect bot lane is because <clears throat> their fighting potential is much lower than the enemy. <clears throat> it's better that you don't waste your time trying to get them ahead because the likelihood of you getting a gank being successful in a lane like that is minimal. So you need to put your pressure in the areas where you'll be able to get your laners ahead or yourself. <clears throat> Overall, I'll mention the ganking or protecting pattern. You protect bot lane with wards, slash smart things, slash scuttlecraft. For mid lane, you have to gank it pre-6 and 2v2s after 6. Do not 2v2 z4-6. You need to gank top most when you are 6. However, you can gank at the 4-6 as well, but it's more reliable if Yas and you are level 6. For the Leo Yas gank, that is the most synergizing gank out of any of the lanes. So I would recommend you gank top probably the most out of any of the lanes. But you are ganking top, top the most, then mid. 
and you don't want to gang bot too much, but if you get a lead, then you might want to transition that lead into bot lane. Okay, so I'll now look into the game itself. I'm not going to go through the entire replay, I'm just going to look at the main points which I have noted and <clears throat> go from there. Okay, so I realize you are starting bot side, which is at blue buff. I would say it's a good decision to start bot, as there's little E threat at the start of the game for bot sides. You don't really need to protect them at the start of the game, like at the early, early start of the game. It's better you protect them later on, so it's good to start bot. <clears throat> You'd want to gank mid or top as well. So the, because you want to gank mid or top, it's good to start bot, because if you were to start top and you're parting downwards, you will not be able to gank top if you're parting that way. You'd only be able to gank mid and bot. So it's good to start in bot. You need to also think about which camp you're starting on. If you want to start bot side, you'll only be able to gank top or mid because of the fact that you're parting in an upwards direction towards red buff. If you're starting at red buff, you're parting in a downwards direction towards blue buff. So you're more likely to gank um, bot and mid in that scenario you won't be able to gank top. So you need to think about it in terms of a perspective. Can you gank that specific lane or do you want to gank top and mid first or do you want to gank bot and mid first? <clears throat> you're starting bot side, so that's fine because your goal is to protect bot lane. In the first place, I realize you lose blue buff. That's fine. So you're getting extra leash from your um, support. That's fine. That happens some games. Oh, th another thing. My bad. I should have taken off um, the Pacific um, fog of us. I'm just gonna place it on you. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go back. The tad. Okay, so another thing to take into mind is looking at the lanes and seeing which lane comes latest. If if bot lane comes latest, you know that you started bot side. If top lane comes latest, you know that this you started the started top side. So you need to think about it in that perspective because the, a thing to do in jungle is you need to track where the enemy jungler is at all times. It's very important because if you're able to know where the enemy jungler is, you can take advantages like go into his jungle that he is not on, so you might be able to see if he has any camps up, or you might even be able to place wards in. So when you he comes in next to that area of the map, you'll know where he is, or you can might be able to take drag because you know he's on the opposite side of the map. Might be able to take repair because the opposite side of the map. Might be able to take an objective because he's on the opposite side of the map. So it's good you can track the jungler. <clears throat> so in this scenario, you just look at bot lane and top lane because he will not start mid. So you can see from way in advance that he, he did not start top lane, so he started bot. So from that knowledge, you know he's going to be parting. From from red buff up to um, from red buff all the way to his blue buff. Depending on his desired choice, he might clear chickens. However, because he's a, um he has more AOE, he might clear chickens. But but um he might take se severe damage as he jungle. So you probably will just path from red to um to wolves then to blue buff. So he will look for a gang top side first or mid side. Most likely what he will do. So this is fine, you went from um you lost your blue buff, but you went from naturally you went from blue buff to grump. So red, that's a good clearing clearing direction and clearing path. If you're able to take this path, you could just go and get try and get a gank after you reach level three, ideally. <clears throat> Another thing is another thing I could have mentioned, but I didn't mention it previously, is because you have the Pacific Blue known as Zombie Ward, what you could have done is you're starting at blue buff. Because you're starting at blue buff, what you could have done is you could have placed a zombie ward in this specific bush next to red buff, so you'll know if the enemy jungler tries to invade the buff. The possibility of the enemy invading is higher for a snowballing early, or not a snowballing, rather early game jungler, a jungler who can have potentially in the early game um, more than a tank. If a tank is not likely to um to try and invade, so you mostly want to place a zombie ward if you know that the enemy jungler has the ability to invade. 
So you should have placed a, a zombie warden, a warden here, and then it will become a zombie ward. So you'll be able to see if the enemy jungler tries to take your camp. Or any scenario where if it's a tank jungler, if I want to place a warden here, so it'll become a zombie ward, so you'll be able to see where he is later on. You want to you can make use of the zombie ward rune by that way. So let's see what happens here. Eh? I believe if I remember that he comes to invade you to try and take your red buff. Which is why I mentioned if you had a zombie ward, you could have placed a ward in that bush and you'll know when he comes to try and evade you. I'm just going to rewind it a bit to see the specific pathing of E. So he decided to take the um take the plant and path into here. If you had a zombie ward, you might be able to see him in advance. If you place the ward here, <clears throat> you might be able to get a little vision of him beforehand. To be able to take less damage. Another thing is when you were clearing your red buff, I realized that you were not um, kiting the camp. Each camp that you do, you should try to kite it. Reason why I think why I say you should try to kite the camp so you'll take less damage. What I mean by kiting is, you probably know already, but just to emphasize it, you need to put yourself at a higher HP by hitting the buff. When your skills are, are off cooldown, you want to hit the buff, and you want to move away from the buff by each auto attack. So the buff will cancel its autos, so you'll be higher on HP. So you keep walking back, and you'll be able to be higher on HP. This is essential to kite each camp. You don't want to kite only one camp. You want to kite every camp, so you'll be higher on HP when you try to gank. Okay, so he invades you. Before this play happens, I'm just going to discuss it. I already mentioned before that Yi and Syndra in the early game has a larger presence than does um, Vlad and Lee Sin. Because they have a larger presence, they can do more damage in the um, pre-6. That means you don't want to engage any fights with um, Yi and Syndra at the start of the game, which is what I mentioned with the 2v2 point. So you don't want to fight this if they end up trying to fight you. Not only that, but you are at a level disadvantage because of the fact that um, your buff got stolen. It might not just be because your buff got stolen. Let's say you he just happened to clear more cams quickly, quicker than you were able to, and you were at a level disadvantage, then you would not want to fight this anyway. You are at a one level below, so you would become up lower on this team fight, in this fight anyway, even disregard any fact that they have a stronger 2v2. So naturally, you all should be behind on this team fight. And be at a lower HP than the enemy is able to. As you can see, your HP is your HP of both Vlad and yourself are much lower than is Syndra and Yi. Because your HP is so much lower, that just emphasizes the fact that 2v2 is weaker than your 2v2. So you should never engage fights like that. I realized that what you do is you go from clearing your blue, then you cleared your ground, then you go up here, you take your red buff, then you took your um, raptors. Then, for some reason, you go backwards and take your um, wolves. I don't recommend that. That is changing up your path and um, making it in an awkward position. You should never path like that. If you were going to do that, then instead of pathing downwards, you should then just take blue, then ground, then take your, um, your red buff, then take your birds, and after you do that, if you really wanted, you should have gone up here and took an, um, your golems instead of going back down here. That's switching up your pathing too much. And to be quite honest, I don't think bot lane is going to get ganked by you so early in the game. So because they're get, not going to get ganked so early in the game, you don't need to protect them so early. So it's better that you just finish your clear in this direction, and then you come back to take your wolves for when you when you are done backing. So I don't like that you went backwards, back to your wolf camp. That's changing up your path. You want to have a smooth path. You don't want to go backwards and then go back up and then 
etc. Keep going, changing up your pattern. He should have done a full <coughs> clear besides your walls and then come back after you back and take walls. This is fine that you kill Sagan, but what I would have recommended is instead you hit the plants to make sure he's there and to also make sure that um <clears throat> that Jin is not in the bush waiting with him because you could possibly die there if you were to do that. If you didn't know where Jin was, if you didn't track him specifically on the map, he might have walked back, I'm not sure. But if he, you weren't 100% sure, then you should have hit this plant to get the envisions a more safer route. It's fine that you take Scuttle here, however, I don't think your bot lane is going to get ganked so early by E, mainly because, as you could have seen in the lane, you need to track each lane, as you could have seen in the lane, your bot lane is a pushed up, almost permanently pushed up, I apologize for that phone by the way, your lane is always pushed up, while their lane is always pushing in, so the likelihood of you get, they getting ganked by E is slim, so there's no reason for you to really clear Scuttle Crab, because, because they're getting pushed in, to such a large extent, they're most likely going to get pushed in um, later on in the game. <clears throat> I apologize for the phone call. Okay, so what I say is you should not um, clear scuttle crabs so early in the game because they're getting pushed in. So what I mentioned before with the adaptive play, you can't just think beforehand that that's what you should do. You should protect the lane. You need to monitor the <clears throat> pushing up of your lanes, the pushing up of the enemy lane. If they are pushing in, more your lane is a more up here, then it's better to put to get the um scuttle crab. But there's no real reason to get scuttle crab here besides gaining an experience boost because your lane is not going to be pushed up that far. So you need to be adaptive. It's better you have just um cleared your full clear up to here. If you saw no ganks, then you should have backed immediately instead of back going backwards to world camp and then backing. <clears throat> I understand now you're going to go and clear your golems. However, it was it would have been better if you did a smooth path and went straight to golems. There was something else I noted here. You see <coughs> Master Yi and um, Syndra in mid with Vlad. Uh, and Vlad is obviously can't win a fight against Yi and Syndra. So what you should do is you should at least ping that Master Yi's mid. Like at least press your um your red ping or your caution ping. So you'll be able to warn all the lanes. Not only mid lane, but warn all the lanes of the position of Master Yi. You should always make use of your pings. You don't want to... Um, just keep your input to yourself. As a jungler, you want to put as much info into your lanes as possible. You should ping this immediately so you'll be able to make not only yourself aware, but all your laners are aware of the position of Marcy and to ensure that um, Vlad doesn't decrease his HP pool by fighting aimlessly. He ends up decreasing his HP pool because laners, many laners don't think about what they're doing in the game. Not to um, be rude or anything, but many laners don't focus on the Pacific matchup like if the jungler's gonna come if they could win it or not they just do whatever so you need to ping them back as a jungler that's one of the rules of a jungler right so you saw Marcy in mid last Marcy disappeared into the fog of war in topside river because he disappeared into the fog of war in topside river he <clears throat> the only place he can gank is topside or he goes to clear his camps because you have this knowledge that the only place you can gank is topside, you need to take into consideration that he could possibly come and try to gank top. So if you have the idea to try and gank top, he could come and try to counter gank it. So you need to be careful. You need to always keep track of the um, position of the enemy jungler. And you need to think about if you can gank that specific lane. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> You're going to try and get a gank in, so you need to take into consideration that you could have ganked top. So you're going to get a gank, this is fine. Probably, as I said before, you need to take into consideration that you could be here, or coming soon. I'll just move the fog of war to make this clear. As you can see, he is parting upwards, so you need to take into consideration that you could possibly die if he comes up. Okay. So 
So I see you back in here. This is fine, yeah, however, be because you're back in here, what you need to do but is you, you know that website. he is I coming top. So you need to you need to ping back the caution things yeah. and um warn Yasao yeah. that he could be coming top to try and gang the lane. So because you are aware of the knowledge that he was previously men, he's going to part he parts up, you saw him part up. So you need to warn your lane because you're backing, you won't be able to have any presence in the lane to help him. So you need to caution him <clears throat> that he might get ganked. The fact that he ends up um, getting a kill here on Wukong is very variable. Uh, if Wukong knew how to avoid that, that wouldn't have happened in a higher level game. So if that didn't happen, there's a possibility that Wukong could collapse onto um, Yasuo together with me and he could and together with he and Yas could die. So you needed to ping that he was coming top. I know it's very minor things I'm focusing on, but every minor factor comes into play, and in our overall scheme of things, it adds up, and it can sh can put your laners behind if you don't provide the information. I'm just going to fast forward again. So this is fine, your pathing is fine. <clears throat> you go away from a downwards direction after you clear down um, golems. I'm just going to take out the scoreboard. As you can see, Syndra is ahead of Vlad at this point, so you might not really want to focus too much on ganking mid. <clears throat> because the Vlad is behind, he's not too behind, but he's a little behind Syndra because she has one kill and he probably hasn't cashed in with his extra CS yet. So you don't, might not want to gank that lane before level 6, you might not want to. So it's better that you probably try to um, gank bot instead. Even though your laners are behind in an overall scheme of things, you can most likely gank bot here than you can gank mid. So it's better you attempt to gank bot here. They probably, they don't even have a ward here because they couldn't have seen you. Let me just move the vision. No, they don't know you're here. They're backing. <clears throat> so you ended up taking Scuttle Crab. Taking Scuttle Crab is an, is an okay decision because you want to protect bot lane. Because there was no gank bot. Uh, but you could have gank bot if they had showed up. Let's play back a little bit. Play back to minute 7. I think I mixed up what I meant by the bot lane gang. I think at minute 7, instead of um, ganking bot lane, you went to clear your camps. Okay, yeah, it was right here. You went to clear blue buff here when you didn't need to clear blue buff. You could have just went straight to gang bot lane instead of clearing the camps because you could see your um, experience. I'll just transition to, to see your experience level. Alright, as you can see, if you were here previously and you didn't clear this camp, I believe that bot lane was open to a gank at that specific time. So you could have went to gank bot lane instead of clearing wolves. You want to look at it, yes, right now is where you were able to get a gank. Previously, you, you won't be able to get a gank later on because you wasted time not ganking immediately. You just went to clear wolves. You weren't able to get the gank in. You're looking at your specific experience levels. As you can see, you're far away from leveling up, so there's no point really trying to clear this camp. It should just go bot immediately and try to get a gank off. Because you're not going to be able to get ganks bot lane very often. So you should try and do it as soon as you're able to get your opportunity. So as soon as <clears throat> you realize you're not going to be able to get a level up by clearing camps, you should try and, and the lane is gankable. You should just run bot to try and get a gank. So you lose up on the opportunity trying to get a gank because of that. I'm not sure if you realize, but um, Marcy has been pinging quite often. He's been pinging that you are at this buff. He's been pinging 
care previously. He's been paying several times. He has the understanding that pings are very essential. So this is what you need to develop. You need to take this knowledge to heart and use your pings wisely. If you realize the enemy jungle is at a specific place on the map, you need to ping it to warn your laners. Um, something else which I would say to um, assist you in watching your lanes easier is you can use your hotkeys. You can specifically bind through your camera control. You can bind onto your F keys to determine how the flow of each lane is. <clears throat> so you won't have to specifically click on the area of the map. You can just press your top keys, your F keys. And you'll be able to tell where what is happening in the specific lanes. You don't need to touch the keys and then stay on the key. You need you could just um click the key and have a glimpse of the lanes. So you'll be able to know if you can gank this lane now, or if you can't gank it now. <clears throat> it's more efficient than just clicking different positions on the map. You can't see the exact way to do this here, but it's under camera control, and you can bind the keys your on your team to the F keys, F1, F2, F3, <clears throat> and F4. This will take a long time to get accustomed to, however, you can do it. Okay, so right here you see you see that um ye, ye tried to um kill you here, but what you did is you walked hopped away, which was fine. <clears throat> but a similar thing with pinging. You knew that Syndra was mid previously and she walked downwards to try and help ye to kill you. And you saw you here previously, and you see Vlad in mid lane. So what you should do is you should be pinging caution pings here to warn Vlad that he and Sindri could collapse on him. It might not happen in this specific scenario, however, it can happen in other games. Okay, so going for gank here on to mid. This gank is fine because, because you know that um, Yi was previously here and he's most likely recall at this specific time or at least not near to mid lane, so this is a fine gank. And he got the kill, so that's fine. But let's take into account, you see Sion come in. And <clears throat> because Sion comes up, you can't push the lane. But let's say Sion was not here. What you could have done is, we should have done is push any lane. So the lane would crash into the tower, <clears throat> and the lane would be in a more advantageous position for your laner, and you'll be able to get some damage onto the tower. But you can't do it in this situation because Sion arm up here. Sorry, your comms is fine. Okay, now I'm just going to have a look at this scoreboard to show you something. So, you are 2-0-2 and your Yas. Your Yas is 3-0-0, while the enemy Yi is 0-1-0 and their top lane is 0-2-0. That means you have an advantage together with um your Yasao over the Wukong and Yi. So, you have nothing to really fear by being top lane here and trying to get damage on the tower. I realize you ended up trying to get some damage on the tower. However, just, just have a look at this. So you ended up taking the tower from at least 3 quarter HP to a quarter in HP. And now you all are just running away from me as if you are scared of me. But he is way, way more behind than you are ahead. And your top lane is ahead. So you shouldn't fear anything in this scenario. What you should do is you should just wait for the lane to push in again. You should maybe even help Yasuo push in the wave. And once you do that, you get the tower. You wasted so much time not getting the tower here. Uh, this might not seem like a big mistake, but this is one of probably bigger mistakes in this replay. What you should do is you should help him push any wave instead of back in, which you proceed to do. You should just push any wave and get the tower. You're not only getting the tower, but you're getting a goal lead on your overall team, and you're getting more map pressure. <clears throat> Uh, 
another thing, because your Yasa is so ahead, he's 3 0, zero what you could do is <clears throat> you could, instead of backing there, and even if you didn't proceed to take the tower, what you could have done is you could place wards around the area. So if Scuttle Crab was up, you could have cleared Scuttle Crab, because Scuttle Crab is not up. So what you could have done is you could have just placed a ward here. You could place any wards you have. You're playing E, so you have plenty of wards um, previously. Or, yes, yeah, so you could have just placed wards around the area to protect Yasa when he comes back to lane from maybe a possible future gun. You want to protect your lane. So same thing I said with being adaptive. You want to protect your lanes that are ahead, and you want to protect your lanes where you can't naturally get a gank easily. So, <clears throat> because yeah, so it's so ahead, 300, you should place, you should come back to here probably in the future and place wards around the area to avoid him getting ganked and losing his lead and his snowball. Another thing I recommend is you should never gank a losing lane. That's a key thing as a jungler. I'm sure you've heard it before. Your losing lane in this situation is not your bot lane. <clears throat> They're losing to an extent, but the losing lane mainly is your mid lane, which is Vlad and Syndra. Vlad is way behind compared to Syndra. It might not seem like it, but because he has more deaths, he's lost uh he's lost much more experience than he should have lost, and just overall behind in comparison to the other lanes. So you should try to avoid ganking mid lane. You attempt to try and gank mid lane, even though it's not 100% necessary, but you attempt to gank the lane. Now I'm just going to put back on um, this vision. Right. So, I'm just going to think about where Marcy was previously. Marcy was top when you backed. When you backed, Massey was top and trying to defend the tower. Because he was top before, he's going to take a while to clear his camps. So he's most likely, when you come back, he's most likely going to be clearing his top side camps instead of being bot side at a specific time. Not only that, there's no way for him to gank bot lane unless he tries to path through your jungle. So he's most likely not going to go bot side anyway. So he's probably going to stay in their top side so he has access to top and to mid. He's most likely going to try and snowball his mid laner. So he's going to stay around top or mid. Because of this, you should be aware that he's going to be top side. He's not going to be bot side. So because you know that he's going to be top side, you should take this into consideration. As you can see, Marcy tries to collapse on you because you didn't think about the fact that he could be top side. He's only top side because you saw him there before, and he's still carrying his camps top. So you need to track the enemy jungler. It's very key to track the enemy jungler. If you're able to do this, you can avoid dying. You can get, um, gain more objective control and map pressure as a whole. So <clears throat> you could have possibly died here. If um, your Yasa wasn't able to roam down and try to assist you. The only reason you don't die here is because your Yasa was way ahead. <clears throat> and your Vlad realizes that he needs to assist. But if the, if you were alone, you could have been collapsed on by Yi and Syndra. So you need to take into consideration where the enemy jungler is. <clears throat> you can focus on tracking the enemy jungler in a set amount of games, which I mentioned previously. Tracking the enemy jungler is a very important part of jungler role. Same thing with pinging. So if you know where the enemy jungler is, you can ping to warn your laners where the enemy jungler is. Back to what I said previously about um, placing wards. What you could do is you could place a ward here or here. You mostly want to place your wards in bushes because you have the ruined zombie ward. <clears throat> you can might even place a control ward in here so you could be able to protect your top lane, and even your mid lane, though it isn't a key to protect your mid lane in this scenario, but any ward coverage on your snowballing lane is important, so you will not fall behind. Okay, <clears throat> he's slowly transitioning from the early game, now into the mid game. All these factors come into play from previously, and this is where you don't use your lead. You have uh, quite a big lead, 3 0 3 running and on the enemy jungler, so you need to use your lead. What I recommend you do is you try and see if they have ganks for bot lane, if you can gank bot lane. Ignore mid lane the best you can because mid lane is behind 
in the overall scale of things. You don't want to focus on putting your pressure on the side of the map where your laner is behind. You want to try and transition your pressure onto a lane which is <clears throat> which is not behind and is not ahead. This will be your bot lane. They're not significantly behind. They could be worse off. So you want to try and transition your lead you have into the bot lane. You don't want to just have your lead and you don't want to just keep continue farming. Farming aimlessly doesn't help your team. You want to transition your lead into the lanes. So from this lead, what you should do is you should try and see if you could gank bot. So you can leverage your advantage. <clears throat> top is already here. Uh, once you're able to get bot lane ahead, and because you have top lane ahead already, you can gain more objective control. Like let's say you get your bot lane ahead. Uh, set of kills or you push off the bot lane from being onto your laners <clears throat> because you're able to do that you might be able to get objective control like you can go on to drag not only that <clears throat> because your top side is cleared by Yasa who's ahead you can might be able to even go on transition from getting a drag into transitioning to get a repairal because you have more map control you have bot lane control because you dank bot and you already have top control so you might be able to transition into a repairal there's many things you need to consider <clears throat> With your lead, you need to use your lead. I believe you end up getting drag at a certain point. Should be soon. <clears throat> this parting is fine. You're trying to take your camps. You might be even, even able to protect your top laner because he's ahead. You don't want to gank mid, which is, I believe, what you end up doing here. You end up trying to gank mid, even though he's on the grand scale of things, he's behind in comparison to the other lanes. You don't want to gank mid. Because you're putting yourself behind not only that but you want to apply your pressure to the other lanes like if you grant mid here and end up dying you're putting yourself not only your blood behind <clears throat> further behind but you're putting yourself behind also and overall you're putting your team behind how you win games is you place it on a on a scale if your team is a uh -huh, have a carry that's stronger then you need to place your lead either equal to that enemy carry or to a higher level than the enemy carry. So if you gank here and end up dying, you're putting a lead to just a diminish and it's not worth it. As you can see, you end up dying and you're throwing away your lead slowly. Your lead is just slipping away. You're not using your advantage. What you should have done instead is you try, should have checked to see if you could have got a gank on board. <coughs> or maybe you could have played dragon. You don't want to gank lanes that is that is disadvantages for you on the grand scale of things. Okay. What I meant by you should have gotten dragon is i'll show you the exact time in the game where you had the ability to get dragon i believe it's when yas was killed by um by yi you need to use the knowledge of where the enemy jungler is if you know where the enemy jungler is and he's away from an objective you have control over the objective it's right here <clears throat> you see that yi kills yas and he appeared right here on the map you even saw him appear on the map <clears throat> because you know that you should immediately rush the dragon now I can even show you. I don't believe they have any um, wards on dragon. All they have is this ward. You can easily bypass that. You don't want to walk here anyway. Just walk straight to drag and take it because you know he was top side. There's no way for you to path from top side all the way to bot side and to take drag or try to smite steal it. So instead of walking aimlessly here, trying to um, get a gank by basically yourself without your laners helping you, you should instead <clears throat> immediately go to get drag because you know the enemy jungler's position. You want to snowball your lead. You don't want to keep it lingering. So let's go back to the position we were previously.
Okay, so I'll now look into um, what you end up doing next. <clears throat> As I said before, you don't want to gang mid. You want to transition your lead into bot side. You end up trying to transition your lead into bot side. However, your laners are very... You need to analyze the gang. Can your laners follow up to try and make this gang successful? The answer is no, because your laners are all the way pushed up to their tower. And you're trying to initiate a gang far away from them. And the enemies are very close to the tower as well. The only out of position player is Sion and... Was likely not gonna get a uh, kill on Sion here because of how far away your laners are. It's just not going to happen. You need to think about it strategically. Can you make the gank work or not? Hold on a minute. Another thing I would suggest is you should um <clears throat> only gank bot side when you have your ult up. The only way for this gang to work here was if you were able to push up, was able to kick Sion into your team, into your laner, so you were able to um, help them get the kill. Because they're so far away from it, they can't assist you in getting the kill. So it ends up being no. If you had your kick, you could have ganked this. So I would say is, when you're trying to get a transition of your lead onto a lane, which was, it's not exactly completely lost, but it's not ahead either, you want to have your ult up, if you're playing um, Lee, or basically you want to have your high damaging spell up at that specific time, so you'll be able to make the gank more successful. You don't wanna you you need the damage because your laners are behind and because the enemies have um, a larger level or rather experience boost difference and item difference. You need more damage to make this gank successful. So you should only gank the lane if you have your damaging skill up. So you ended up taking drag, which is what I um, mentioned previously. However, I would say you should have placed a ward over the wall. You know that Yi died and Syndra died, so there's a very low chance of them stealing the dragon. However, <clears throat> if it was in a scenario where either Yi or Syndra was up, they could try to steal it from over the wall. So you should always place a ward over the dragon pit. If, or at least, yeah, you should always try to place a ward over the dragon pit. Maybe in this specific scenario, you don't need to, but you might need to if it was in a different situation when the enemy jungle is up. Okay. This is one of your, another one of the big mistakes you make. You are attempting to invade the enemy jungler when the game is quite advanced in time. You, there's no real reason to count the jungle here. You're trying to counter jungle here, but what you should really be doing is as soon as you took the dragon, you should be trying to rush up to try and get repairal. So you should be trying to ping on your way into here and pinging to get the um repairal with assistance pings. You have complete control of the top side of the map because Yasa was ahead. So because you have complete control, you need to try and push your lead, your advantage. You don't want to give away your lead by possibly dying in the enemy jungle because you're trying to counter jungle for no real good reason at this specific point in the time. Not only that, but if you look at your vision alone, you have no idea where Wukong is, you have no idea where Jen is, you have no idea where Sion is. So you're trying to counter jungle when you have no vision. That You should never counter jungle when you don't have vision of the enemies because they can easily collapse on you and you have the risk of dying and losing your lead even further. The main emphasis of this replay analysis is trying not to push your lead out of bounds and making your advantage basically negligible in terms of that there was no point in you having a lead to begin with. Because you didn't use the lead. So you should instead of what the good play would have been to take Dragon and immediately rush up to take Repairal because Repairal is an almost guaranteed tower in most scenarios. You might have died in this scenario, however, it's a very risky play, and if repeated in several games, you are very likely to die in that position. Hold on a second. 
So as I said before, your lead is slowly slipping away. You need to control your lead. You have barely used your lead in this game. You haven't transitioned it into objectives. You've got kills, but you haven't transitioned into objectives. You haven't got the top tower at the start of the game, which I mentioned you could have gotten easily. <clears throat> you haven't tried to pressure bot lane when you had the chance to pressure bot lane. Not in that scenario when you tried to gank. And you threw away your lead by trying to gank mid when your mid laner is behind <clears throat> and you don't have vision. And just simply counter jungle for absolutely no reason and pushing your lead away. So you basically lost your uh, your chance to get repairal. <clears throat> and it's very close to the time of repairal despawns at 20 minutes, so you might even be able to get it. So right here, you see your three laners trying to get um, T1 of bot lane. This is a good thing for your laners to be getting T1 of bot lane. However, there's no real need for you to be bot lane here. Instead, what you should be doing is, in this scenario, is when you should be trying to go into the enemy jungle and seeing if they have any camps up to clear any camps. There's no need for you to be bot lane. They have their guarantee to get this tower. What you should do is instead try to go in this jungle and see if he has any camps. So in this scenario is when you should try to counter the jungle, not when you just aimlessly did it before with no um, thinking behind it. Not only that, but what you could have done instead of trying to get pressure on bot side, what you could have done is you could have immediately walked in mid once you saw your three laners trying to get bot side, and you could have pushed in mid and possibly gotten mid because Master Yi has to leave mid because they have to protect their um, bot T2 tower. There's At some point, your three laners are going to push up to the T2 tower and they're going to need um, help defending it, so he's going to have to leave. So because he leaves the lane, you are able to push up mid and there's a high chance you might be able to get mid tower too. You need to push your advantage. You don't want to just um, put ex excess amounts of pressure on a lane when you don't need to put the pressure. You want to divide your pressure. Because there's no reason for you to be here. Your laners can do this on their own. You see, Yasuo ends up taking any camps. But what you should be doing is taking any camp, not, not Yasuo. Yasuo should be applying any damage onto the tower. You don't want to put excessive amounts of, um, of control or pressure on a certain area of the map. You want to apply your pressure evenly ah. across the map. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll now look into the next position on the game. Your time to get repair is diminishing gradually. At 20 minutes, you won't be able to get it anymore. Hold on a moment. So yes, what I was saying is you could have been more, much more efficient. Instead of just splitting <clears throat> into four people trying to get T, um, T1 bot tower, you could have got mid tower possibly, or at least pushed in the lane to get more damage from the minions onto the tower. Or you could have maybe even tried to get repairal. The reason why I say you could have gone repairal in that scenario is because they have to direct their attention to bot side or mid side as Masi was doing. So you'll be able to split your pressure onto Repairal because there's no way they could control Repairal when they are trying to defend. You need to think about efficiency. Jungling is all about efficiency. Okay, so what I realize here is you all are trying to team fight when you do not have Vlad. Vlad is only on the other side of the map. There's no way for him to help you all in this team fight. Even though he's behind on an overall scale, he still has a significant amount of damage which you can apply into the lane. <clears throat> into the team fight, I mean. So because he doesn't, you don't you all don't have Vlad, he shouldn't be fighting this team fight to begin with. And I realize you all are trying to engage the team fight when the enemies are MIA. But because the enemies are MIA, they can appear at any point in time. So I can even ult in to try and engage the team fight. And you all will 100% lose this team fight if all the enemies appear. Which you do end up appearing. So as you can see, you lose Yasa, which is your most fed carry in the team, because you're all a team fighting when you don't have one of your carries, even though he's behind. And simply, it's just a mismanagement of team fighting. No reason for it. What he could have done is he said he could have tried to get repairal, which I keep mentioning. You need to apply your pressure onto objectives. Or, if not that, <clears throat> what he could have done is maybe go on bot side instead of trying to push more advantage into mid lane. To 
force a team fight, essentially you're forcing a team fight. You don't want to force a team fight. Because you need to be able to kill one of the enemies before you're able to team fight effectively. You can't fight a party fight. So what you should have done instead is you should have gone bot side and tried to push in this wave. This wave isn't fully pushed in. <clears throat> so when your laners are mid, what you should do is you should caution ping them to make sure they do not end up team fighting because they are going to win lose a 3v5 100 percent of the time. So you could have pushed in bot side while they are being are distracting the arm team. So you're applying more pressure on the map as a whole. So we are now coming to the end of the um the Pacific replay because <clears throat> further points in this game, there's not much else to talk about. What I already emphasized the main points. Uh, the main points I'll summarize now is you need to be efficient in the jungle, efficient with your pathing, efficient with your objective control, efficient with applying your pressure to the correct lanes, efficient with not ganking a lane that's behind, efficient with um ganking top lane when um or rather protecting top lane when your lane is ahead. You need to protect you need to do everything efficiently and you don't want to path in a way that is disadvantageous just for you. You want to clear your camps in a chronological order and you don't want to count the jungle when there is no reason to count the jungle and when you don't have vision of the enemies because you can get collapsed on and killed and also you need to monitor the map awareness being where the jungler is. You need to predict where the enemy jungler is at specific points in the game to avoid um, getting collapsed on or maybe using this advantage to pressure different sides of the map. There's just a few more things I need to mention. <clears throat> I'm going to skip to um, 2140. I believe there was something I have to say. Right. This is why I need to say another thing linked to efficiency. There's no real reason for you to be counter juggling here. I understand you're trying to get the enemy's blue buff, but there's no real reason to try and get blue buff here. Instead, what you should be doing is you should be running to top lane to try and push any wave. What you trying to, what you need to do is you need to try and push in, try and keep every lane pushed in constantly. If you're able to keep every lane pushed in constantly, you're able to pressure the enemies to the extent where they can't defend every single tower. So it's good that you're able to pressure every single lane. You don't want to just go in the jungle and aimless taking camps. There's no real reason to take a camp at a specific point. The enemy jungle isn't losing much by you taking its blue buff. So you should push any wave and pressure the wave. You should at least push it up to probably here and then you can back off. Probably place a ward somewhere in the jungle. You don't want to keep your wards lingering. I know you're playing Lee so you use your wards um, often. But you can easily, because you're already here, you can if you take any blue buff, you at least place wards in the, in the jungle. So you'll be able to see the enemies. But what you ideally should have done is you should have just immediately go on to push up the top, the top wave. You eventually go to push up the top wave, but you're wasting um, precious time by you taking blue buff there. You should already have a pad this way, but at least up to here, if you did not end up taking the buff. It's all about efficiency. <clears throat> Your lead is almost um, minimal at this point because of the fact that everything take into consideration. You're throwing your, your lead from the early to mid game, and that's the main reason why I've lost this game. You haven't pushed your objective control. You haven't pushed your lead into lanes that need a lead advantage, which is like bot lane. You haven't seen the specific times when you could have applied an advantage into the lane. So it's all about not wasting too much time. You're, waste, you're wasting plenty of time in this game and not ganking specific lanes, not applying the correct pressure, not protecting the correct lanes, not having a correct objective control. And yes. <clears throat> Another thing I could have mentioned, which I said previously, is a better thing to have done in this specific game would have probably have been to um, build damage instead of building tank because you had such a great lead, you don't want to build tank. If you build tank in a scenario, you're basically giving away the great lead that you have because you haven't applied it in terms of a damage perspective where you could have snowballed your lanes better. So in this game, you should have bought damage items instead because you have a lead. I know understand the fact that the reason why you went tank because your team doesn't have a tank and you want to engage. However, if you get a lead, you want to build damage. If you don't get a lead, then you can end up um, building tank. Here you're doing a basically similar thing that you did when you counter jungle. Demantic is blue buff. There's no real reason for you to take um, columns here. 
And not only that, <clears throat> you should not be afraid of the enemy team because there's no real reason for you to break, be afraid. You have ward hops, you can easily get away from a an attempt to collapse on you. You just need to push the wave up to here. You don't need to push it up fully. So if you push the wave up to here, at least the lane will be going further and you can easily get away after. As you can see, the enemies aren't even near to top, so you could have easily pushed up this wave and got it going into the tower. Or at least near to it. There's no real reason for you to farm camps. You are just throwing away the lead that you have. There's no real reason. You need to think about each move that you make. You farm when you need to farm, when you need to have an, a level, a, gain a level advantage, and you push waves when it's ideal for you. When you see that there's a ability to do it, there's no real reason to farm. <clears throat> So we're coming near to the end of the replay now, however, I think there's only two more things I need to mention. Getting dragon here is fine. Hold on a moment. Okay, I'm back. So, <clears throat> just going to discuss one more thing. As you can see, you ended up just aimlessly walking into an unwarded area of the map. You ended up walking straight into the into the enemy um, jungle and into a ward, into an unwarded area. You can't see this area because they have a pink ward here. You should try to avoid at best to not walk into unwarded areas. Or at least use your sweeper. You have your sweeper on you. It's not haven't been used. So you should have put on your sweeper if you're walking into an area that's unwarded and you have no vision. So you end up taking a huge chunk of your health down because of the fact that you did not consider that you should have used your sweeper. <clears throat> and now at um 2920. I'm just going to, I haven't mentioned much um, microplay in this game, which is mechanics, because it's not my strong point. However, I'm just going to show you a mismanagement of micro here. So, <clears throat> you attempt to engage a fight, engage in a fight, and you waste your ult to try and push away ye. But in reality, what you should have done is you should have tried to look for the scenario, the perfect scenario, where you can push the enemy, one enemy or two enemies, into the rest of the team. So you can engage a fight with um, Yasuo and Vlad. Because now you have the ability to team fight because you have um, uh, Vlad with you. You didn't have Vlad with you for the majority of the game. So you've wasted your cooldowns for no reason when you could have easily engaged a successful fight here and got maybe a big advantage by winning the team fight by probably killing E. Or killing one of the fed carries and then being able to um, clean up the fight. But because you mismanagement your your spells, you don't have your spells to use, and you can't get out of the Syndra ult, <clears throat> and you just get stunned, and you'll end up in an overall scale, losing the team fight. You need to think about how you use your cooldowns. It's not just about using your mechanics, play, making mechanical plays. It's about thinking about, if I use a spell, would I be able to use it for the next um, important moment in the game. There's a lot to consider as a jungler, as on a whole. So that's basically all I need to talk about for this replay analysis. <clears throat> I already summarized everything beforehand, um, and I think this is really all I need to tell you for the jungle. If you take into consideration all the things I mentioned in this replay analysis, you'll definitely improve any jungle, and you just need to apply it to your games. So focus on Everything I've written, written in here about champion knowledge, ability to recognize win conditions, gravity control, efficient parting, efficient farming, ganking, protecting, counter ganking, map awareness, etc. And the methods to implement it. And you will easily improve your jungle play. The reason why I'm not going to go in further into this replay is because the rest is basically what they say, a clown fiesta. And anything just happens. The game should be done, or at least near to done by now, if you applied your advantage and your lead correctly. 
I thank you for um, listening, and I hope to assist you another time in the future. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in my next coaching lesson. Bye.